Thank you. 
Good afternoon, and welcome to Kodak Hall at Eastman Theater. Before we begin, we ask that you take note of the fire exits located throughout the hall. Exits are positioned along the right and left sides, as well as at the back of the orchestra, mezzanine, and balcony levels. In the event of an emergency, you will be alerted by an automated fire system with instructions. If notified, please proceed calmly and orderly to the nearest exit. For the comfort of those around you, we ask that you silence all cell phones and smart devices to avoid disruptions during the ceremony. Thank you. The ceremony will begin shortly.
Good afternoon and welcome everybody and please be seated. I guess you are. You're seated. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, this is my third ceremony of today. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Figlio. I'm the Provost and Chief Academic Officer here at the University of Rochester. And I'm honored to be here to celebrate the newest graduation class of nursing graduates. This class represents the best and brightest who graduate today as leaders and advocates within the healthcare system. Our school continues to be recognized nationally for our nursing education and research. Um, most recently, number 21 in the country in master's rankings, number 22 in undergrad, number 33 in NIH research funding. And I should just say that that's despite the fact that this is one of the smaller schools of nursing um, in the country. If you look at the ratio of research funding to NIH research funding to faculty, it's, uh, this school is off the charts. Our graduates join the ranks of nursing alumni who are members of the most trusted profession, addressing pressing public health challenges to improve lives and strengthen communities. And the School of Nursing has an enormous impact as part of a broader university and medical center. The school weaves together education, research, and clinical practice, and it drives innovation and in improving healthcare outcomes by prioritizing patient well being and nursing excellence. I encourage each of you to create your own impact on nursing, to embrace the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead, and to continue to de deliver care of the highest order. And as you join the ranks of University of Rochester alumni, I also hope that you stay connected with one another, with your school, and with our institution as a whole. And now it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. David Linehan, who began his roles this past February as CEO of the University of Rochester Medical Center, Dean of the School of Medicine and Dentistry, and Senior Vice President for Health Sciences. We're thrilled to have Dr. Linehan leading us as we continue to move our great institution forward. So please join me in welcoming Dr. David Linehan. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I don't know how many of you were here this morning for the larger one Rochester graduation commencement ceremony we had in Favre Stadium. I think a lot of you were there. But the one thing that I noticed about that, that, uh, about that event is that when they asked the, the graduates from the different schools to stand, they asked the School of Nursing to stand, and it was actually the smallest group of any school, but it was the loudest uh, hooting and hollering. <laughs> and the reason for that... And the reason for that is nursing is one of the most trusted professions uh, in, in the world. And I can attest firsthand to the pivotal role that nurses play in delivering quality patient care because I'm a uh, surgeon that does liver surgery and pancreatic surgery. And so I've worked with nurses kind of in every aspect of that, in the operating room, in the preoperative clinic, in the hospital, in the ICU. And the, it, it, it's undoubted uh, to me that that partnership with the nurses that I've worked with has changed the outcomes for the better in my patients. It's allayed anxiety and fears. It's, um, it's improved care by the research that nurses that I've worked with have done. I remember uh, there was one particular nurse that I remember that I worked with every day for 15 years in the operating room. And when I would arrive and see her, usually at 6.30 in the morning, I, I would see her every day and I knew the minute I saw her that the day was gonna be right. Everything was gonna be right in the operating room. Uh, we worked together uh, so many uh, years together and I knew when I saw her, it just kind of relieved stress in me as we're about to embark on a you know, big and difficult risky operation on a patient. And one day I, was, uh, I came in and introduced myself to the patient and got consent and I left my, the, 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 uh, my nurse partner with the patient and she didn't realize it but I was actually just right on the other side of the curtain because I had to do something in the computer. And she didn't know that I could hear her but she went to the patient and said, I don't know how you got Dr. Linehan. He is the best surgeon at this hospital. You are so lucky to have him. 
And so afterwards, I went to her, and I said, that was really nice what you said about to me, to my patient. And she looked at me and she said, sometimes you have to exaggerate or fib a little bit to allay the patient's anxiety. <laughs> and we're still really good friends. <laughs> but I just want to welcome you all here. This is an amazing accomplishment. Your family and friends are all here and really proud, and I know they've been important to supporting you in these goals. I also want to say that we're facing a crisis in nursing. If you look, uh, by 2030 in New York State, we're going to be short 33,000 nurses. And if you look nationwide, we're going to be short a half a million nurses. And that is uh, something that we really have to address head on. And I think one of the ways to do it, is if there are young people in the audience uh, that are thinking about uh, what they're going to do and what their careers are going to be like, uh, talk to some of these people here and, and, and talk about nursing and what a remarkable career that it is. And there's so many different things in nursing, um, in nursing practice and research, advanced practice, pop population health. It's, uh, it's just an amazing career. And so for the young people in the audience, I want you to think about nursing as a, as a, as a career because we need you. And for those of you, and many of you, I think, that are graduating today, it was a career switch uh, to try something where you really uh, understood that you were benefiting humanity. So I'm charging every single person here to go out and recruit a nurse into the nursing school uh, so that we can uh, be sure that we have the workforce that we need to care for our patients. It's critical, and lives depend on it. So congratulations to all of you. I, I welcome you all here. And I'm going to turn the podium over to the best nursing school dean in the country, Dr. Lisa Kitko. <laughs> few pages because somebody went off script a little bit there. <laughs> Good afternoon, esteemed faculty, honored guests, family, friends, and most importantly, our graduating class of 2024. I have to start off by just saying congratulations to each of you. Give yourself a round of applause. For many of you, this has been a long and exciting day. For some of you in the crowd, we've had three ceremonies today, but I am certainly glad that they saved the best for last. So we're going to, be, uh, we're going to celebrate each of you. I would also like to extend a warm welcome and express our gratitude to Provost Figlio and Dr. Linehan, uh, the CEO of URMC and the Dean of the School of Medicine and Dentistry for their leadership and dedication to the university and more importantly, to the School of Nursing. It is a privilege to stand before each of you today as we ce celebrate the remarkable achievements of our graduating class. Today marks a very momentous occasion for each of you a commencement, which means a beginning. We are here today to celebrate the new beginning for each of our graduates. But as we stand celebrating and thinking of our new beginning, it's also a time for reflection. Each of you embarked on a very unique journey to reach this milestone. Some of you are earning bachelor's degrees, others masters, some have obtained doctorates. Regardless of the path you've taken, each of you has faced and conquered your own set of challenges to arrive at this momentous moment. Along this journey, you have each experienced profound growth, both professionally and personally, from the countless hours of study to the hands-on experience in clinical settings to what may have seemed like years to refine your research question. You have developed your skills and deepened your understanding of the profession and science of nursing. Beyond the academic achievements, each of you has grown as individuals, developing resilience, empathy, and a, and a profound sense of purpose. As, universe, as graduates of the University of Rochester School of Nursing, you are starting your new beginning equipped with a very distinct skill set and expertise essential for you to succeed and thrive in the nursing profession. Your ability to think critically, pose challenging questions, and leverage your experiences gives you the power to innovate and transform patient care and outcomes within our healthcare system. 
as you move forward, remember that this role extends beyond individual patient interactions. You are each catalyst for systemic change, and we need you to do that. Your insights, your advocacy, your leadership truly has the potential to reshape healthcare as we know it, ultimately enhancing the well-being of countless individuals and communities. This role goes beyond you, your role as an individual nurse. As you can see, we all need each other. You must work alongside our partners in medicine, social work, computer science, engineering, and other fields to design the future of our healthcare system collaboratively. The education you received here at the U of R School of Nursing, I may be biased, but it's one of the best in the country, has provided you with an excellent foundation, and each of you are well prepared to succeed in your careers. As nurses and as trusted patient advocates, you have a very unique and important responsibility to the care and well-being of our entire community. You must remind yourself daily that this responsibility is a privilege, and it comes with an expectation that each of you be lifelong learners. Nursing is an incredibly rewarding profession, but it's also challenging. As you move forward in your careers, remember that prioritizing your own well-being and self-care is, is an essential priority. The care and compassion that you bring to your role will truly make a difference in the lives of, with, with, with which you interact, and that is something to celebrate. You are each the innovators who will help redefine nursing and healthcare, and I have no doubt that each and every one of you will go on to make significant contributions to nursing. We are so proud to call each of you an alumni of the University of Rochester School of Nursing. I encourage each of you to be advocates for positive change and to always strive for excellence. I leave you with the, word, with the words of our founding dean, uh, Dean Loretta Ford, who said this during her inaugural address in, in 1972. We are not newcomers, newcomers to change. We have experienced often the stresses and strains of change. What is new will be an effort to adopt a philosophy of joy in change, to view change as opportunities, to gain new insights, to drink deeply into the joys of discovery, and to participate in an adventure. Congratulations to the class of 2024. I wish you the best as you begin this new chapter of your lives. Meliora. At this time, I am pleased to introduce our undergraduate student speaker, who was chosen by classmates to give this commencement address. I am pleased to introduce Sarah Bird, who has been chosen as one of the class speakers representing our undergraduate programs. Sarah, as Dr. Linehan pointed out, came to us from another career. Sarah earned, her bachelor, earned a bachelor's degree in heart history and a Juris Doctorate from West Virginia University. After serving as a public interest lawyer helping low-income and marginalized communities for two decades in rural West Virginia, Sarah realized a passion for health care. Sarah graduates today from the Accelerated Bachelors in Nursing program. Sarah's most recent clinical experience working on various units has prepared Sarah to take on a new role at Strong Memorial Hospital. Did you hear that, Dr. Linehan? Okay. <laughs> on the Med Surge Flex team. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Bird. Thank you, Dean Kitko. Um, also, I don't know, they didn't tell you about this little stool, Dean. <laughs> Now y'all can see me. Um, I'm a lot more nervous than I thought I would be, so let me just make sure I have my water handy. I'm having a, I'm having a sympathetic nervous response, <laughs> which is a thing we learned. <laughs> um, thank you, Dean. Um, I'm also really grateful to my wonderful, kind, brilliant, and uniquely you classmates 
all 14 of you. I think, I think Sam's not here. I'm, I'm, is anybody else not here? Oh, Yuzi. Um, Sam and Yuzi aren't here, so all 12 of you. Um, you all put me up to this. Um, I realize it's not because I'm special. It's just because nobody else wanted to do it. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about this little cohort that could and our enlightening time through this extremely rigorous program. We are technically 14 at the end, 12 present today. I think we started with 16, uh, lost some, gained some, and finally made it here today. Um, some of you worked uh, through the program. That's unbelievable that you made it. Um, so, so parents, partners, children, friends, pets, whoever's here in body and spirit, uh, celebrating your loved one, you should be incredibly proud of what your graduate has accomplished this past year. Because we are such a small cohort, we've gotten to know each other fairly well. And one thing I know about all of my classmates is that they are motivated to create an ever better world using the contemporary skills and concepts that we learned here. Excuse me. That's why we all chose to attend the University of Rochester School of Nursing to receive a contemporary progressive education so that we can be the nurses of tomorrow. This contemporary curriculum the school delivers included not just the latest and best practices in terms of technical skills of nursing, but also the principles that we must uphold to ensure the equitable delivery of care to all. Principles derived from the nursing code of ethics, including that we must be, uh, including that we must respect the inherent dignity and worth of every person and that we must deliver evidence-based nursing care equitably and with compassion and empathy. In this program and through the Nursing Code of Ethics, we're also taught to champion inclusivity and collaborative relationships with all members of the healthcare field in order to advance human rights and disrupt dis disparities in the healthcare system. Outside of the field of nursing, these ideas remain somewhat controversial but nursing has always been ahead of its time. It feels good to be a part of this very special field with this very special group of people. In this program, we learn tools that help foster inclusive, collaborative, and equitable spaces. We learn that little things like language matter a great deal in creating positive outcomes in healthcare spaces. For example, we use terms like pregnant people now instead of pregnant women because to do otherwise would deny the humanity of our trans, gender, queer, and non-binary clients and colleagues. We respect our, we respect and, yeah, clap for that. <laughs> we respect and use our clients and colleagues' stated pronouns and names because to do otherwise would deny the humanity of all of our clients and colleagues, cis folk included. The language used in the delivery of healthcare has evolved over time and for good reason. Respecting one's humanity leads to positive health outcomes. It's really that simple. In one of our classes, we were shown a series of videos produced by the nursing fellows at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. The content of these videos discussed civility in healthcare environments. To promote civility, this content recommended that we reflect inward and consider whether we, we are using outdated language in these spaces that has a distancing or otherizing effect on clients and colleagues. The content uh, in this video specifically cited the use of the word order and acknowledged its effect as a holdover of an outdated custom of top-down hierarchical systems created and maintained to uphold white supremacy. We now understand that the use of language born out of exclusionary policies are wholly ineffective and counterproductive to a truly collaborative environment, like the delivery of healthcare. The use of the word order creates a distance between provider and nurse and nurse and patient because of its dictatorial connotation. We know from research and science that when nurses and providers and nurses and patients share equitable and collaborative roles in the treatment plans, outcomes are better. 
So now we use the word prescription, where we used to say order, because words matter. Many of us took this lesson to heart. We'll go out into the world and respectfully and thoughtfully encourage those we encounter to reflect on whether using outdated language and hierarchical titles that have a distancing and otherizing effect on those with whom we collaborate is contrary to a truly equitable and inclusive space. Uh, we will respectfully and thoughtfully invite those to make different and better choices that we know are more conducive to trusting collaborative and equitable environments. Here at the University of Rochester School of Nursing, we didn't just learn how to listen to lung and heart sounds, take a manual blood pressure, interpret labs, calculate how many milliliters per hour a particular fluid or antibiotic needs to run through the IV tubes, which I still need to work on, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or tell petechiae from ecchymosis. Uh, we also learned, so in addition to those technical skills, we also learned how to be kinder, compassionate people to others, because you cannot be a safe or effective nurse without upholding these principles. So we thank you. Some of you are up here, some of you are down there. We thank you, the creators of this contemporary curriculum, for teaching us not just how to be highly skilled practitioners, but also how to create equitable and just environments that are more conducive to better health outcomes and better workplaces. Nursing will be better because of it, and our clients' outcomes will be better because of it. So thank you. Uh, what once was the little cohort that could is now the little cohort that did. Congratulations, classmates. Go out into this mad, messed up world and make it better and kinder one 12 hour shift at a time. Good luck to all of you and I'm so proud to be in this with you. All right, I don't know if I like to be high or low. There's no happy medium here. Um, Sarah, thank you. Uh, uh, we're, we're lucky that Sarah is going to be here in our community uh, advocating for our patients and families. At this time, I would like to introduce our graduate speaker. I am pleased to introduce Samantha Loper, who has been chosen as one of the class speakers representing our graduate programs. Samantha earned a bachelor's in nursing from Niagara University in 2018 and for the past six years has been working as a nurse at Strong Memorial Hospital in the adult short stay and cardiac intensive care units and as a flight nurse with Mercy Flight Western. Today she graduates, I know, impressive, yes, we have impressive students here at the U of R. Today she graduates with a master's degree from the adult gerontology acute care nurse practitioner program. She is grateful for the opportunities the nursing profession has provided and is looking forward to her new role as a nurse practitioner with the cardiac surgery team at Strong this fall. Please join me in welcoming Samantha Loper. Good evening, esteemed faculty, proud family and friends, and accomplished graduates. My name is Samantha Loper, and I have the honor to be representing the master's cohort here tonight. Tonight's celebration, tonight's celebration of our accomplishments has definitely been a long time coming. Summarizing the last four years of my time spent in the adult, adult acute care nurse practitioner program seemed daunting at first when I first sat down to write this speech. Then it hit me. What better way to compare our time here at the University of Rochester with all of you than by likening it to one of my favorite pursuits, marathon running. Yes, I may be considered one of those enthusiasts who willingly spends weekends running 26 miles for enjoyment, but I have found that this analogy has provided a meaningful comparison to both my academic, to my academic journey and probably yours as well. So let's go back to the starting line together. I began my master's program during the summer of 2020, a period of time when the world was adapting to lockdown measures. 
As a bedside nurse, we had to adapt to the new normal of utilizing hand sanitizer produced by our local distilleries, N95 masks, and scavenging for toilet paper at Target. Many of us grappled with the realization that healthcare as we had once knew, known it would never be the same. During my days off, I engrossed myself in academic textbooks and composed papers for Dr. Sellers, for Dr. Sellers class, all a welcome distraction from what I was seeing daily at the bedside. I remained focused on my academic pursuits, but eventually en encountered the inevitable wall that every runner fears. The wall is the point when your legs are so heavy, you may have a Charlie horse that you just can't get rid of, but the worst part of it is feeling like you can no longer go on any further. My wall hit on December 31st, 2020 in the form of a little COVID positive test. Little did I know that I would not be returning to the bedside for six months, and what started off as a sore throat and a fever would soon become months of recovery filled with trips to urgent care, CT scans, and heart monitors. When you come face to face with the wall, you have two choices. One, you can give in to it. Your second choice is to find that voice in the back of your heart and mind that says you can do this. And you dig deep and you block out any and all distractions. While I was unable to work at the bedside, I focused on furthering my education. Dr. Tucker's lectures on pathophysiology and pharmacology provided me with a mental escape from my physical limitations while also fueling my determination and drive to overcome them. What started off as short walks of 50 yards gradually progressed to longer distances, a mile, a 5K, and eventually a marathon and half marathon within a year of being cleared. Just as my physical endurance improved, so did our academic as well. We started off with online Zoom classes on the couch, but eventually returned to campus. Our, co our course load became heavier, and on top of our already busy work and class schedules, we added on clinical hours as well but we took it in stride together. One class, one mile, one skills checkoff list at a time. This program played a significant role in motivating me, reminding me that the option to give up or to give in to the wall simply does not exist. Transitioning from a bedside nurse to a patient provided me with a unique perspective and helped, shape, and helped me formulate the kind of healthcare provider I aspired to be post-graduation. Despite the challenges, the ultimate goal of earning my master's degree was always at the forefront of my mind. With each mile completed, and every Tuesday morning class attended, the graduation date of May 17, 2024 drew near. Dr. Palermo, who supported me during our Zoom check-ins, was a constant source of encouragement. Soon I found myself donning the coveted white lab coat and embarking on our clinical rotations with my classmates. Throughout my experience here, I have come to understand the unpredictable nature of life. One moment, you're the provider. The next, you're the patient. The bills could go from looking like it's this year to there's always next season. <laughs> One day you're learning to place a central line on a mannequin in Helenwood Hall, and the next thing you know, you're applying what you've learned in lab on a real patient in a critical condition. I cannot stand up here today without acknowledging a very important group of people sitting in the audience because what marathon is complete without your cheering squad? Though each of our cheering squads may look different, without their constant love and support, the journey to today would have been a much harder endeavor. Today, we are surrounded by our classmates, our faculty, our family, and our friends. My squad has been with me since day one, and we even picked up a few friendly faces along the way, each of whom has played a pivotal role in my race and holds a special place in my heart. The ringleaders of this group go by mom and dad, who, surprise, hi. <laughs> um, your unwavering and unconditional love and ever, ready, and ever ready listening ears never went once unnoticed. You've stood by me and cheered the loudest, whether it was studying for a test, wrangling, wrangling a crazy clinical and work schedule, supporting all my crazy ideas and adventures, or rediscovering an inner strength and perseverance I never knew I had. I simply would not be here today without you. Esto es para nosotros, te amo. And so we've reached the end of our journey, the end of our race. This is it. This is our finish line. The beautiful thing I've learned through running is that it gives you nothing but joyous memories to look back on. And I know I will simply have that for tonight. 
Thank you for doc to my classmates, Dr. Palermo, family and friends. The challenges and walls that we faced individually and together as a class didn't stop us. Soak in every moment this evening, smile big in those photos, for it's days like today that make it all worthwhile and remind us that every moment, whether it's big or small, should never be taken for granted. Congratulations, future nurses, educators, leaders, and NPs. We did it. Thank you, Samantha. I am now pleased to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Karen Cady who is Vice President and Chief Nursing Executive for the University of Rochester Health System. Karen brings over three decades of service in nursing. She currently provides executive leadership for nursing and clinical support staff across the University of the University of Rochester Health System, including Straw Memorial Hospital, Golisano Children's Hospital, Wilmot, Wilmot Cancer Center, and the seven regional community hospitals within the system. In addition to her executive role, Karen serves as Assistant Dean for Clinical Practice at our School of Nursing. Karen is a dedicated advocate for nurses and patients, championing diversity, equity, and inclusion. Her focus on standardization, collaboration, and innovation has significantly improved patient care, staff safety, and leadership development. Her innovative approaches have been vital in navigating challenges like the COVID-19 pandemic while maintaining high standards of care. We are very honored to have Dr. Karen Cady here with us tonight. Okay. I'm not tall, I'm not short, I'm just in the middle. So thank you, Dean Kiko, for that lovely introduction. Congratulations, graduates, and welcome family and friends. As I stand today in front of you, I can't help but feel a bit of deja vu. Five years ago, on this very day, Friday, May 17th, 2019, I stood on this stage delivering the keynote address at the School of Nursing graduation. But what makes today even more special is the irony that today, May 17th, happens to be my birthday. Yeah. So twice now, I have got to spend time with some of the most amazing people that I know on my birthday. So I feel very um, blessed for that. So I find myself in that same position, but I certainly am not the same person as I was five years ago. I think all of us have changed and evolved in those five years, and your commencement today is a testament to the journey of pushing yourself beyond what you believe you are capable of. Despite the word, what commencement really means, which Dr. Kitko already told us, it means beginning. The word is sometimes mistaken to mean ending, because it's usually associated with an end of a degree program. Coincidentally, I am actually commencing with you in, as well. It feels for me, for me like a beginning and an ending. As many of you know, next month I'll move to Nashville, Tennessee to begin as the next Chief System Nurse Executive for Vanderbilt Health System. Reflecting on my time at Rochester, <laughs> thank you. Reflecting on my time at Rochester, um, I have come to realize the profound importance of pushing yourself beyond perceived limits. And I'll have to thank the pandemic for that one. Our, our journey since I was last on this stage has been anything but smooth sailing. And, and both Sarah and Samantha mentioned that as well, the challenges that we have faced over the last five years. There has been moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty. But through it all, we have learned that the most significant growth happens when we are outside our comfort zones. It's about saying yes to opportunities that scare us, that challenge us, and that ultimately shape us into the leaders we inspire to be. It's about working and on and growing with teams that have a common goal, with high trust and those that respect its members. My experiences here 
and all that I have learned from you is what has prepared me to take on this next challenge. Today I have the fantastic opportunity to address both the nursing graduates as well as the healthcare leadership graduates. What a better opportunity to talk about the need to build relationships and highly effective teams. To the clinicians in the audience, you bring the clinical knowledge to the table. To the healthcare administrators in the audience, you bring that business acumen. But you both bring compassion to our patients and our families. This is the common ground that you stand on. I encourage you to look for ways to collaborate and share resources and expertise on a regular basis so that when you need, a, need to create innovative strategies in a time of crisis or make difficult business decisions, you already have a foundational relationship to work from. In these challenging moments, the secret to your success rests with two things, your ability to effectively communicate and leveraging those trusting relationships. These are the most important characteristics of great teamwork. I want to share with you one of the most important lessons that some of you in this auditorium taught me about teamwork. In the first wave of the pandemic in 2020, we saw very few pediatric patients admitted to the hospital, but the adult care areas were overwhelmed. In a desire to keep everyone working and optimize our resources, we made a difficult leadership decision to move the pediatric nurses to the adult units to help the nurses there. While we thought we did all the right things and took all the right steps to prepare them, we communicated the rationale, we thoughtfully assigned them to the units, we provided them with checklists. This turned out to be a really terrible decision. In the summer, when things had settled back down, we asked the pediatric nurses to debrief with us and tell us how we could have done this better in the future if there is another surge of COVID. The nurses talked about their experiences with floating to the adult units and how they missed the comforts of working with their home units and with the teams that they knew. It wasn't about taking care of the adults. It was about the familiarity with the people they were working with. The pediatric nurses asked that if they were needed again in the future, could we please just send the adult patients to the children's hospital? And they together would figure out how to take care of them. Well, this surprised the heck out of me. Because if anybody knows, pediatric patients usually don't want to take care of adults anyway, and now they're inviting them into the children's hospital. But that's just what we did with the second surge, and it worked out beautifully. So what they taught me was that keeping teams intact and giving them new challenges is far more successful than breaking up the team. Groups of people who trust each other and know each other's skill set and preferences can accomplish the impossible. This lesson also taught me that the people who do the work usually have the solutions, and you should always consult them before you make any big decisions. I have no doubt that your education and experiences here at the University of Rochester School of Nursing have taught you invaluable leadership lessons. I know you will keep the university's motto of ever better at the center of your thinking as you shape and mold your career, build high-functioning teams, and sculpt the careers of others. Congratulations, class of 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Right. On the behalf of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I have an, uh, the honor to present these exceptional graduates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. As everyone knows, their degree were officially conferred earlier this morning during the main university commencement. Graduates of Bachelor of Science, will you please stand? Marshals, please bring the graduates forward. Hello, my name is Dr. Louis Rosario McCabe. I am the core coordinator of the Accelerated Baccalaureate Program. I'd first like to present the graduates who were awarded their degrees earlier in the year. 
They were pinned and received their diploma at a separate ceremony at that time. Austin Eric Carr. Thank you, Dean Tifto. Joanny Grisel Marte. Tha Tu. I'd now like to present the May 2024 graduates whose degrees were officially conferred earlier this morning during the main university commencement. Today they received their pins. Sarah Bird. <laughs> Laura Cavanaugh. Michael Clancy. Marjorie Ditus. Shimali. Guntosh Kaur. Emma Rose Kelly. Whitney Marie Marks Tower. Brayla Ann Potter. Jasmine Andreina Reyes. <laughs> Taylor M. Cerdicini. <laughs> Bonnie L. Thousand. Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Rosario McCabe. I am the program director for the RNWS program, and I'm honored to present the RNWS graduates. Caroline S. Goldhammer. <laughs> Carly R. Jones. Lindsay L. Rhodes. Karen M. Wilcox. Caroline N. Roby. Will all the Bachelor of Science graduates please rise and be uh, recognized by the audience. Congratulations.
Please be seated. All right. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I now have the honor to present the exceptional graduates for the degree of Master of Science Nurse Practitioner, whose degrees were officially conferred this morning during the main university commencement. Will those graduates please rise? And marshals, please bring the graduates forward. Hello, my name is Dr. Craig Sellers, and I'm the specialty director of the Adult Gerontology Primary Care Nurse Practitioner Program. It is with enormous pleasure and pride that I stand before you today um, as I present the graduates who have completed their studies and earned the degree Master of Science in the Nurse Practitioner Programs. Cassandra N. Aldessari. Nora Arnold. <laughs> Shannon Lynn Billings. <laughs> Kyle P. Burke. <laughs> Timothy Burroughs. Reno J. Cheshire. <laughs> Kaylin Gray Catone. <laughs> Jessica K. Cropo. Ilanka Valkyria de Jesus. <laughs> Madeline E. Dempsey. <laughs> Rebecca R. Dombrowski. Christine Victoria Everechia. <laughs> Chun Ha Ju Eisenberg. <laughs> Ekinechi Ezianoliu. Casey Marie Gall Gallagher Lucitra. <clears throat> Rosella Marina Grant. <clears throat> Catherine Houtschild. <clears throat> Catherine is the recipient of the Sarah and Ernest Taylor Memorial Nursing Award. Gianna Marie Herlihy. Okay. Congratulations. It's upside down. Nassim Hanif Hurd. Alisa. Alisa A. Knox.
Samantha Ashley Loper. Marissa Lynn Maggioli. Paula Manu. Alyssa Marie Mapes. Irene Mensa. Irene is the recipient of the Elizabeth Klinger Young Award. Amy L. Miller. Amy is the recipient of the Louise Wilson Haller Memorial Prize. Colette J. Modrak. Oh, okay. do, you have, do you have a middle initial? Okay. Erica Neal. Maura R. Nicholson. <clears throat> Josephine B. Niederst. Marissa O'Leary. Vivian Chiniri Obi. Linda C. Orgy. Emily Lauren Patterson. Josie Jason Emmanuel Perpignan, Jr. Chloe M. Perry. <laughs> Emily A. Petrizak. <laughs> Courtney Reefstanger. Irene J. Redband. <laughs> Jacob Daniel Reed. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Rudman. Jessamine Scipione. <laughs> Huat Tseskeya Seum. <laughs> Amanda K. Slack. <clears throat> Ann C. Steele. <laughs> Holly Ann Stone. <laughs> Mackenzie Ryan Tallman. <laughs> Lily Tang. Christopher Scott Vara. Jacqueline S. West.
Liam Edward Wheatley. Keith C. Williams. Trent V. Wyland. Casey Michelle Zavitz. Anne M. Quinn. Will all the Master of Science in the Nurse Practitioner Program graduates please rise and be recognized by the audience. Congratulations. Please be seated. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I now have the honor to present the exceptional graduates of the Advanced Certificate Program. Will those students please stand? All right. Marshall, please bring our graduate for, for graduates forward. Marshalls, we can bring those students forward. The advanced certificate grads. Oh, they already came? Oh, sorry, there's an error in my script. Well, I'm glad somebody is paying attention to what's going on. All right. On behalf, now we're going to move on to another group. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Nursing, I have the honor to present our exceptional graduates of the Master of Science Leadership in Healthcare Systems, Clinical Nurse Leader, and Nursing Education Programs. Will those graduates please rise? Marshals, now please bring these graduates forward. Specialty Director for the Leadership in Healthcare Systems Program and the Clinical Nurse Leader Programs, and I'm very proud to present the graduates who have earned their Master of Science degree in Leadership in Healthcare Systems Program. Andrea Ann Capon. <laughs> Alexa M. Council. Christine Dieter. Yeah. 
Lauren E. DeFolvio. Stacy Lee Esposito. Amy Gempiatro. Christina E. Hawes. Courtney Lamfren. <laughs> Heidi A. Leonard. <laughs> Danielle Paskertella. <laughs> Lily Raleigh. Allison Reitmeyer. Yes, you can. Victoria L. Thomas. Kristen Toland. Elaine Trotier. <laughs> Becky Vincent. <laughs> and now I am proud to present the graduates who have earned their Master of Science degree in the Clinical Nurse Leader Program. Natalie C. Bob. Claire Conwell. Jenna Cook. Margaret A. Coulter. So good. Kathleen M. Hoven. <laughs> Melissa A. Johnson. Rebecca A. Matthews. <laughs> Jessica Malnokovich. <laughs> Margaret Phillips. <laughs> Leslie A. Warren. The recipient of the Leadership Award for Excellence in Healthcare Leadership goes to Amanda K. Welter. Good evening, my name is Maria Marconi and I'm the director of our master's program in nursing education. It's my pleasure to present to you tonight the amazing graduates of our master's program in nursing education. Christina Arenas. <laughs> Molly M. Arnold.
David J. Black III. Rachel N. Brown. Amber L. Brownell. Nicole Kate P. Bunch. Alicia Danette Costanzo. Catherine M. Crane. Christina M. Duby. Elizabeth J. Frank. Celeste J. Harstow. Whitney Barrett Jackson. Allison N. LaPietra. Evelyn M. Marshner. Jillian M. McAvoy. Jillian is also the recipient of the MNE Faculty Student Recognition Award. Victoria G. Marrick. Christine E. Monahan. Tap Nuan. Janet C. Patterson. Will all of the Masters of Science Leadership and Healthcare Systems Program clinical nurse leader and nursing education graduates please rise to be recognized by the audience. Congratulations. Please be seated. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Nursing, we now have the honor to present our exceptional graduates of the Doctor of Nursing Practice and PhD in Nursing and Health Sciences program. Will those graduates please rise? Marshals, please bring the graduates forward. Good evening. I'm Dr. Lydia Rotundo, the Associate Dean for Education and Student Affairs and the Director of the Doctor Nursing Pro Practice Program. It is with great pleasure that I present the Doctor Nursing Practice graduates for 2024. <laughs> Christine Borman. 
The title of Christine's scholarly project is Building an Innovation Fellowship for Nurses as a Catalyst for Change. Shannon Ann Brown Francion. The title of Shannon's scholarly project is a multi-component intervention to optimize interdisciplinary communication and improve the early identification of patient deterioration in a skilled nursing facility. Courtney Hallmark. The title of Courtney's scholarly project is Integration of a Nurse-Led Behavioral Emergency Response Team in Adult Medical Surgical Service. Dwight Hetler. scholarly project is implementation of a communication protocol to facilitate patient provider cost of care conversations to prevent financial toxicity in oncology patients. Lisa Ann Parker. The title of Lisa's scholarly project is Supporting Nurse Managers Through the Implementation of a Peer Networking and Professional Development Program. Well Amber Lee Sealer. The title of Amber's scholarly project is the establishment of a women's health practice to reduce barriers to gynecologic care in a rural primary care office. Cassie Weiss. The title of Cassie's scholarly project is establishing an evidence-based breastfeeding-friendly pediatric practice to improve breastfeeding rates. <laughs> Heather Lynn Wensley. The title of Heather's scholarly project was a clinic-based parent peer support program for parents of transgender and gender diverse youth. Hello, my name is Dr. Marie Flannery. I'm the director of the PhD program in nursing and health science, and it was with great pleasure and tremendous pride that I present the PhD in nursing and health science graduates of 2024. <laughs> Lindsay Bartek. <laughs> Lind Lindsay's, Lindsay's dissertation was entitled Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare Access and Use by Young Hispanic American Women. And I want to share that Lindsay is the recipient of the Paul Burgett Nursing Student Life Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Faith A. Lambert. Faith's dissertation is entitled Investigating Autonomy Supportive Relationships of HIV Positive Young Adults 
and its impact on HIV care self-management. Sunita Pokhril Vatarai. Sunita's dissertation, Sunita's dissertation is entitled Estimating Left Ventricular Ejection Fraction from the 12 Lead Electrocardiogram in Acute Heart Failure Patients. Will all of the PhD in nursing and health science graduates and DNP graduates please rise and be recognized by the audience? Congratulations. Please be seated. I would now like to honor a faculty member with the Dean's Award for Excellence in Teaching. This is always special because this faculty member is on the stage, but they don't know that they're receiving this award. So all of you pay close, close attention to whenever they figure out uh, who's receiving this award. The recipient of this year's Dean's Award for Excellence in Teaching exemplifies the highest standards of education within our School of Nursing. Our recipient this year primarily teaches psychiatric and mental health nursing to students in our accelerated program. <laughs> they bring nearly a decade of clinical nursing experience to their teaching role including providing care at the Child and Adolescent Inpatient Psychiatry Unit at the University of Rochester Medical Center. Their approachable demeanor and genuine care for students have earned them widespread acclaim among those they teach. Students consistently praise them for their personable and friendly approach, noting their ability to connect with them on a personal level. Their teaching philosophy revolves around being a guide on the side facilitating students' understanding of complex concepts while providing invaluable advice and mentorship. Their dedication to student success extends beyond the classroom as evidenced by their involvement in the school simulation team and assessment review committee. This individual earned their master's degree in nursing education from the UR School of Nursing. And I speak on behalf of all members of the School of Nursing community that we are proud to award this instructor today for their outstanding work to teach the next generation of nurses. It is my distinct pleasure to present the 2024 Dean's Award for Teaching Excellence to Kaylee Sullivan. <laughs> Congratulations. And I do want to recognize, um, as we recognize Kaylee, I am honored, as each of you have been during your time here, to work with the best faculty in the world. Please, everyone, give a round of applause to our faculty members. <laughs> and
And one more time before we close with our benediction, would all of our 2024 graduates, I want you to do something for me, as important as we all are and you are to each other, you, none of you would be here without the support of this very rambunctious audience we had here with us today. So what I would like you to do is stand up for a minute, turn around, find that family member, whoever you're here with, and let's give them a big round of applause. Thanks to all of the families. Congratulations, you may be seated, and thanks to everyone. It truly takes a village uh, to get to this point, and uh, the graduates would not be here without you. We will be closing our 2024 ceremony with a benediction that will be given by Leanne Patel. We ask that all family members and friends remain seated until the faculty and students have left the theater so they may greet you in the courtyard outside of the Miller Center across the street and we're all hoping that it is rain-free. So hopefully it's rain-free when we go outside. Thank you for sharing this day with us and our graduates. Maliora. Good evening to all, and what a good evening it is indeed. I would like to share with you tonight the words of the late John Donahue, poet, author, priest, and philosopher. Kindly stand for the benediction, please. Thank you. Thank you. A blessing of presence. May you awaken to the mystery of being here and enter the quiet immensity of your own presence. May you have joy and peace in the temple of your senses. May you receive great encouragement when new frontiers beckon. May you respond to the call of your gift and find the courage to follow its path. May the flame of anger free you from falsity. May warmth of heart keep your presence aflame and may anxiety never linger about you. May your outer dignity mirror your inner dignity of soul. May you take time to celebrate the quiet miracles that seek no attention. Finally, dear graduates, may hope be a light within you that you carry each day. We ask all of this with a spirit of joy and well-being. Amen. Amen.